So let's get back to iPhone. In 2007, iPhone reinvented what we think of as a phone. It's hard to remember what it was like before iPhone. <laughs> Carriers controlled what was on the phone. There were a few apps, but nothing like we think about apps today. There was no free market for apps. There was no app store. It was really different before the iPhone. And the iPhone started to change all of that in 2007. It was a revolution. In 2008, we added 3G networking and the App Store. In 2009, the iPhone 3GS was twice as fast, and we added some other cool features like video recording. For 2010, we're going to take the biggest leap since the original iPhone. And so today, today, we're introducing iPhone 4, the fourth generation iPhone. Now, this is really hot. And there are, there are well over 100 new features, and we don't have time to cover all of them today. So I get to cover eight of them with you. Eight new features of the iPhone 4. The first one, an all new design. Now, stop me if you've already seen this. <laughs> uh, believe me, you ain't seen it. You've got to see this thing in person. It is one of the most beautiful designs you've ever seen. This is, beyond a doubt, the most precise thing, one of the most beautiful things we've ever made. Glass on the front and the rear, and stainless steel running around, and the precision of which this is made is, is beyond any consumer product we've ever seen. Its closest kin is like a beautiful old Leica camera. It's unheard of in consumer products today. Just gorgeous. And it's really thin. This is the new iPhone 4. Now, it is just 9.3 millimeters thick. That is 24% thinner than the iPhone GS. Again, a quarter thinner in something you didn't think could get any thinner. As a matter of fact, it is the thinnest smartphone on the planet. So let me point out, let me point out a few of the things, uh, a few of the external things on it. Here are the volume controls, volume up, volume down, and mute. On the front, we have a front-facing camera. We have the receiver. We have the home button. We have the micro SIM tray. We have a camera and an LED flash on the back. If we look at the bottom, we've got the microphone, the 30-pin connector, and the speaker. And if we look on the top, we've got the headset jack. We've got a second mic for noise cancellation and the sweet sleep-wake button. Now, because there have been a few photos of this around, people have asked, what's this? Some have even said, this doesn't seem like Apple. <laughs> what are these lines in this beautiful stainless steel band? Well, it turns out there's not just one of them. There's three of them. And they are part of the entire structure of this phone. That stainless steel band that runs around is the primary structural element of the phone. And there are these three slits in it. It turns out this is part of some brilliant engineering, which actually uses the stainless steel band as part of the antenna system. And so one piece, 
is Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS, and the other is UMTS and GSM. So it's got these integrated antennas right in the structure of the phone. It's never been done before, and it's really cool engineering. So we have an all-new design. It's the thinnest smartphone ever. It uses stainless steel for strength. It uses glass on the front and the back for optical quality and scratch resistance. It's got integrated antennas and extraordinary build quality. Again, I don't think there's another consumer product like this. When you hold this in your hands, it's unbelievable. So this is our all new design for the iPhone 4. That's the first one. Second one, this is a biggie. Something we call the retina display. What's that? <laughs> well, in any display there are pixels. Here's four of them. We start off with the retina display by dramatically increasing the pixel density. Four times as many pixels in the same amount of space. Now why is that important? Well, let's make more pixels, and let's say we want to draw the letter A. And this is the outside boundary of one of the strokes of a letter, the letter A. Well, as you can see, we turn on pixels inside that stroke. We can get far more precision the more pixels we have. And we play all sorts of tricks by putting different levels of gray pixels on that line as well to try to fuzz it for our eye. But when we zoom out of this, what you can see is that because we have four times as many pixels, we get really, really sharp text compared to what we normally get on displays of lesser resolution. Now the retina display has 326 pixels per inch. This is There's never been a display like this on a phone. People haven't even dreamed about a display like this on a phone. But it's more than that. It turns out that there's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch that when you hold something around 10 or 12 inches away from your eyes is the limit of the human retina to differentiate the pixels. And so they're so close together when you get at this 300 pixels per inch threshold that all of a sudden things start to look like continuous, continuous curves. Like text looks like you've seen it in a fine printed book. Unlike you've ever seen on an electronic display before. And at 326 pixels per inch we are comfortably over that limit. And it's extraordinary. So let me give you an example of a normal display on the left and the retina display on the right. Look at the difference. Can you see it? Here's some more text of different sizes and different weights. And you can really, really see this stuff. Once you use a retina display, you can't go back. <laughs> when you get to character-based languages, kanji in this case, it's also striking. And it's not just text, it's images and video as well. Look at the difference. This is the same image on a normal display and a retina display. Here's another one. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So what I'd like to do now is show this to you live. I've got an iPhone 3GS, which has got a widely praised display on it. And I've got a new iPhone 4. So let me get them both fired up here. There we go. And I can ask them to blow these up. There we go. Look at that difference now. This is pixel. 
this is, we had to get special projectors for this because most projectors can't display as many dots as are on a retina display. So this is pixel for pixel accurate right off these two displays. And you can really see it. Look at that folder there. Uh, and uh, let me go inside and you can look at the icon of the folder, compare them, look at the text, look at the linen, look at the icon of the compass, the icon of the clock. Isn't that amazing? So now, let me go ahead. I'm going to go to some websites. I'm going to go to the New York Times today. And uh, let's just compare these websites. Our networks in here are always unpredictable, so they're a little, I have no idea what we're going to find. They are slow today. You know, you could help me out if you're on Wi-Fi, if you could just get off. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Uh, we're having a little problem here. I don't know what's wrong with our networks. I'm afraid uh, I have a problem, and I'm not going to be able to show you much here today. I can show you some pictures in the camera roll. Let's just go take a look at some photos here. Take a look at that. Same photos. Pretty different. Again, same photo. See the difference? You really see it around the eyes, the teeth. So it kind of just comes down to what do you want to be looking at all day long? So the retina display. Three and a half inches, the same size as the iPhone 3GS, yet with 960 by 640 pixels, that's four times more pixels than the iPhone, G iPhone 3GS. 326 pixels per inch, an 800 to 1 contrast ratio, which is again four times better than the 3GS. We're using IPS technology. This is a very advanced LCD technology, which is quite a bit, in our opinion, quite a bit better than the OLED technology for these types of products. And uh, provides much more accurate color and much higher resolution. You can't make an OLED display with this type of resolution right now. And so we think the IPS technology is, is really quite superior. And it results in incredibly sharp text, images, and video. Now, again, the retina display has got 78% of the pixels on an iPad right in the palm of your hand. iPhone OS 4 makes it so your apps automatically run on the retina display, full size. But they look even better because what we do is iPhone OS automatically renders your text in the higher resolution and all your controls in the higher resolution. So you get that automatically, and your apps look even better without you doing any work. But if you do a little bit of work and open up the hood of your app and, in, and put in higher resolution artwork, then they will look stunning. So we'd suggest that you do that. So that is the retina display. Awesome text, awesome images, and awesome video. We think this is going to set the standard for displays for the next several years. And we don't think anybody's going to come close. And you know, the display is your window into the internet, into your apps, into your media, into your software. We think it's maybe the most important single component of the hardware. And we've got something here now that's like the best window on the planet. So that's the retina display.
Third up, the iPhone 4 is powered by the A4 chip. <laughs> Apple's A4 chip. This is a chip designed by our own team. They are really good, and this is wonderful to have in an iPhone. Now, let me show it to you. This is the back of the iPhone. You take the back off. First thing you notice is the iPhone 4 is packed to the gills. There's a tremendous amount of functionality in not such a big space. And so you have to kind of hunt to find the A4 chip, but it's right there. And let me just point out some of the other things. There's the micro SIM. We went to the micro SIM because it's smaller. We need the space. The radios, the connectors. You can see that the biggest single component in the phone is the battery. We've been able to make the battery a little bit bigger. And so that's where everything is inside the phone. Now, because we've been able to make the battery a little bit bigger and because the A4 is so good with power management, we've been able to improve the battery life as well. So we have four, up to 40% more talk time on 3G from five hours to seven hours now. Six hours of 3G browsing, 10 hours of Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours of video, 40 hours of music, and 300 hours of standby. So we're very pleased with this. Also, our environmental report card is strong. Arsenic free, BFR free, mercury free, PVC free, and stainless steel and glass are highly recyclable materials. So we're doing great there. So the A4 chip, <laughs> A4 chip, up to 32 gigabytes of storage, Quad band HSDPA and HSUPA for 7.2 megabits per second down, 5.8 megabits per second up. That's theoretical because the carriers don't support that yet, but as they do, uh, we'll welcome it. And uh, dual mics for noise cancellation, 802.11n Wi-Fi, and of course GPS plus accelerometer plus compass. So we've got some great hardware in the iPhone 4, in the A4 chip. Number four, we've got another really cool piece of hardware. Remember when we added the accelerometer and how that opened up a whole new vista of gaming? Well, we're taking it even further with the iPhone 4 because we're adding a gyroscope. So, we're adding a three-axis gyro which is fantastic, pitch, roll, and yaw, also rotation around gravity. And we tied the gyro and the accelerometer and even the compass together to provide six-axis six ax axis motion sensing. And we've got some new core motion APIs that you can call that give you extremely precise position information. And it's perfect for gaming. And one of the reasons it's perfect is because it's built into every iPhone 4, so you know it's there. So what I'd love to do now is give you a demo of this. And since this demo does not require the network, <laughs> I should be OK. So this is, the, uh, this is a little app that we wrote. And this is being run with the accelerometer now. And as you see with the accelerometer, I can tilt it from side to side or backwards and forwards. And, uh, but I can't, it doesn't move when I rotate around gravity. And the positioning is, is good, but not super precise. So now by tapping the word accelerometer, it's going to change to the gyro. And now I get much more precise movement here. And as you see, it rotates around gravity. So let me go ahead. So I'm going to play this game here. And I think I'll take this one off. All right. And maybe I'll take this one out. And I'll take that one out. And this one out. 
and this one out. Maybe I'll take that one out. I practice this a little bit. <laughs> oh. Well, you get the idea. So. Listen, some of our amazing engineers cobbled that together for me to show you the gyro, but I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. So the gyro joins our four other sensors in every phone. We now have the gyro, the accelerometer, the compass, proximity sensor, and the ambient light sensor. These phones are getting more and more intelligent about the world around them. And it's very exciting. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with the gyro built into every iPhone 4. So that's number four. Number five. This is a great one. A whole new camera system built into iPhone 4. Now, everybody loves to talk about things that are very tangible when it comes to photography, like megapixels. But we tend to ask the question, how do we make better pictures? And they're, they're different things. Megapixels are nice, but what cell phone cameras are really about is uh, capturing photons. Because the cameras are so small, the sensors are so small, the lenses are so small, that it's all about capturing photons and low light photography. So what we've done is we've gone from a three megapixel to a five megapixel sensor. But we're using something that has been shipping for a while in larger cameras, but is fairly new to smartphones. And that is what's called a backside illuminated sensor. It's a way of getting a lot more photons to the sensor by getting some of the wiring and stuff out of the way. In addition to that, when most people increase their megapixels, they make those pixels smaller. When you make pixels smaller, they capture less photons. What we've done is as we've gone from 3 to 5 megapixels, we've kept the pixels the same size, 1.75 microns. And so they don't capture less photons per pixel, and we have more pixels. We've got a 5x digital zoom built into the camera app. Of course, what we pioneered, tap to focus. And we've got an LED flash built in. And the pictures that we're taking off this are pretty remarkable. Of course, you can do portrait and landscape. You can see the digital zoom right there. And these are pictures that are taken right off the iPhone 4. They haven't been touched in any way. And it shows you, it shows you what kind of quality we're able to get. Again, these are completely unretouched. These were all taken by our employees, just called some of the better ones that I saw. <laughs> so this gives you, an, as an example, that low light photograph is hard to take with any camera, much less a, uh, a phone. So we're really happy with the, the, the uh, photos we're taking with the iPhone 4. We think we got a great camera built in. But that's not all. Because the camera also records HD video. And that's HD video at full 720p at 30 frames per second. So it's real HD video. Now, we pioneered tap to focus for still photos. We now have tap to focus video. And we have built in video editing for trimming your clips right on the phone and one-click sharing to share your photos. And the LED flash also will stay on to illuminate scenes for video recording. 
And so you can actually record HD video right on your phone, edit it right on your phone, and then with a few taps, email it, send it in an MMS, send it to MobileMe, send it to YouTube. It's pretty remarkable. But we're going even further than that. Because what we've done is we've written an application ourselves <laughs> called iMovie for iPhone. And rather than tell you about this, I, I, I want to show it to you. And to show it to you, it's my great pleasure to invite Randy Ubelos. He's one of our incredible engineers. Our chief, he's the chief architect for all our video apps. I'd like Randy to come up and show this to you himself. Randy? Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Thanks very much. You know, I've been working on video editing software for a long time on some pretty groundbreaking products. 15 years ago, it was Final Cut Pro. Three years ago, it was the new iMovie. This year, I had the opportunity to work on another one, iMovie for iPhone, and it's one of the most exciting things I've ever worked on. You can now record HD video, edit with beautiful theme transitions and titles, and share your finished pr uh, movies all on the device that you carry in your pocket every day. It's really amazing. Let me show it to you. Go ahead and bring this up, and you can see the icon there. I'll go ahead and tap on that. So once we bring up the application, you get a list of all the projects that you have. And I'm going to go ahead and just tap on this project. And now I get my editing environment. I can see the clips that I have edited into this project down here along the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the phone over so we can go to landscape. And you see I got the same view here. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing on this. I can record directly into the timeline if I want, or I can choose from existing uh, clips and photos that are on the device. I'm going to go to my video bin here, and I'll just scroll down. Let's pick this clip and put this in. And I can pinch and change the scale of the timeline down here. And we'll go ahead and select this clip. And now I can just grab the pin and drag this to trim the beginning portion of the clip to set the length to be whatever I'd like. I can zoom that in a little bit if I like. Now let's go ahead and add a photo. So what I'm going to do is go back to my bin, go to my photos. Then I'll scroll down here a little bit. And we've got this weekend and SF event. I've got a nice picture here that's got the whole group. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Now, once I've got that in there, I can tap on it, and photos automatically get a Ken Burns effect on them. So I can go ahead and adjust that. I'll go back to the beginning, and I can pan around, I can zoom in, and you'll see that as we go from the beginning to the end, I'll get a nice Ken Burns effect on that. I can also use theme transitions. So I'm going to go ahead to this title, and I'm going to switch it from across dissolve to a theme transition. And when I do that, I get this nice theme transition that'll come across on here. We can go ahead and put a title on the first clip. I'll just double tap on it. I'll select title, and I'll choose an opening title. I'll just go ahead and tap, and I'll uh, give us a nice uh, title here. So I'll go ahead and just type in uh, our California vacation. And once I put that in there, one of the things you'll notice is that it's put San Francisco on there. The camera records geolocation information into the video that's been recorded, and we pick that up automatically, and it gets put into the theme, as you see there on the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some music. So I'll go ahead and I'll bring up the audio bin. I could bring in uh, music from my iTunes library, or we also have some theme music that comes with the product. So I'll go ahead and choose this playful track. And let's go ahead and just play this back. Now we have five different themes uh, with iMovie, so I'll go ahead and tap the gear here, and I can switch to a different theme. So I'll switch to the travel theme and select that I'd like to use the theme music. And what you can see here is that for this theme, the uh, geolocation data has actually been put on a pin on a map, and that map slides around and the pin moves around based on the location that you have uh, on the map. And if I scroll over here a little bit, you'll see the transition has been replaced with this nice theme transition with some stamps and things. Um, so that happens automatically when you switch from one theme to another. So I can come back to the project list, 
and I can tap the export button, and I have three different sizes that I can choose to export all the way up to HD 720p. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a version of this project that was exported out at 720p HD, and what you're gonna see was produced entirely on the phone, recorded, edited, rendered, all completely on the phone. I'll go ahead and show you that. That's iMovie for iPhone 4. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Isn't that awesome? So iMovie for iPhone. And uh, you'll be able to buy this right on your phone for $4.99, if we approve it. <laughs> and, uh, And uh, so this is, again, part of this amazing new camera system on the iPhone 4. And we're really proud of it, and I think you're going to like it a lot. Now, before I begin number six, I, uh, our guys were running around like crazy backstage, as you might imagine. <laughs> and we figured out why uh, my demo crashed because there are 570 Wi-Fi base stations operating in this room, OK? We can't deal with that. So we have two choices. Either I've got some more demos that are really great that I'd like to show you. So we either turn off all the stuff and see the demos, or we give up and I don't show you the demos. Would you like to see the demos or not? Yeah. OK. So here's the deal. Let's turn up the lights in the hall. Several hundred of these are these MiFi things, too, by the way. So all you bloggers need to turn off your base stations, turn off your Wi-Fi. Every notebook, I'd like them to put, put them down on the floor. And all of you look around, I'd like you to police each other. <laughs> if you want to see the demos, shut all your laptops, turn off all these MiFi base stations, and put them on the floor, please. Come on, look around you. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, I think bloggers have a right to blog, but if we want to see the demos, we're not going to be able to do it unless we turn off all these MiFi base stations and laptops, set them on the floor. <laughs> I've got time. <laughs> This is a testament to how far we've come, isn't it? <laughs> it's incredible. 570 Wi-Fi base stations in this room. Wow. All right. We done? Yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but uh, if we want to see the demos, this is what we have to do. All right. So number six, we're really pleased with it. But there is one more thing. <laughs> And I think it's best that I just show you. Now, I really want your Wi-Fi devices off. Are they off? <laughs> Please turn them off if you've turned them back on. So in 2007, when we launched the iPhone, it was my privilege to make the first public call on stage to one of my best friends in the whole world, Johnny Arve, the head of our design team. And uh, I'd like to do the same on this occasion. 
So I'm going to go ahead and call Johnny now. Johnny. It's uh, this never freezes up, so you guys haven't turned off all your Wi-Fi. Come on, let's get it off, please. <laughs> hey, Johnny, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing okay, except for these guys that aren't turning their Wi-Fi off. It's a bit isn't it? Yeah. You know, this is amazing. I uh, I grew up here in the U.S. with the with the Jetsons and and with uh, Star Trek and communicators, and just dreaming about this. You know, dreaming about video calling, and and it's real now. Yeah, did you did you I, have this I, kind I, of stuff um, in England? I, I grew up watching exactly the same TV shows. You know, I, I used to I, I used to love that that sort of wonderful, um, sort of optimistic view of the future, and uh, and it's real now, isn't it? It's real, especially when people turn their Wi-Fi stuff off. <laughs> <laughs> It's sort of odd, isn't it? Because as you know, the, the idea of communicating this way, it's an old idea, it's one that we're we're familiar with. We've just had to wait we've had to wait an awfully long time for it to become real, haven't we? Yeah. Well listen, I uh, let's have lunch later on. All right, I'll see you soon. Thanks, Johnny. All right, see you soon. So, we call this FaceTime, FaceTime video calling, and it's, it's great. It's iPhone 4 to iPhone 4, anywhere there is Wi-Fi, and there is no setup required. You don't have to find a server, you don't have to type in anything. You don't need a special code. You don't need a buddy list. Nothing. You just make a phone call. You can use the front or the rear camera. You can switch to the rear camera so the person on the other end can see what you're seeing. You can just switch back and forth real easy. Portrait or landscape. You turn your phone, it automatically does the right thing on the other side. So if you have two people wanting to talk to somebody, you can just go into landscape and Get a little bit wider aspect ratio. And the video and the audio quality is great. Now, FaceTime is going to be Wi-Fi only in 2010. We need to work a little bit with the cellular providers. Get ready for the future. So we're Wi-Fi only in 2010. And Apple will ship tens of millions of FaceTime devices this year. Tens of millions of FaceTime devices this calendar year. So there's going to be a lot of people to talk to. So FaceTime video calling. We're really happy with this. Now, we, uh, we made a little video to just show some of the ways that we hope people will use FaceTime. And I'd like to run that for you now. This is one of those moments that reminds us why we do what we do. 
So FaceTime, iPhone 4 to iPhone 4, anywhere there's Wi-Fi, zero setup, portrait or landscape, front or rear camera, and amazing video and audio quality. Now, FaceTime is based on a lot of open standards, H.264 video, AAC audio, and a bunch of alphabet soup acronyms. <laughs> and we're going to take it all the way. We're going to the standards bodies starting tomorrow, and we're going to make FaceTime an open industry standard. <laughs> so FaceTime, that's, that's number nine. So that is the iPhone 4. And we think it's the biggest leap we've taken since the original iPhone. We're really proud of it. And uh, I think you'll agree there is more to it than met the eye. So price and availability. Well, first of all, the iPhone 4 comes in two colors, black and white. They're, they are both gorgeous. And the price, with the normal qualifications and two-year contract, $199 in the US for the 16 gigabyte model, same price as the 3GS, and $299 for the 32 gigabyte model. Now, I'm thrilled to also announce that AT&T is going to make an incredibly generous upgrade offer. Their offer is going to be, if your contract expires any time during 2010, you are immediately eligible for a new iPhone 4 at the same $199, $299 prices if you top up your contract to two years. So you can get up to six months early eligibility for an iPhone 4. If your contract expires any time this calendar year, you top up your contract to two years, and you can buy an iPhone 4 for the same price, $199 or $299. So we're thrilled about that. Now, what's our lineup look like? Well, today, or yesterday, it was the iPhone 3G at 8 gigabytes for $99, the 3GS 16 for $199, well, we're going to just add iOS 4 to the 3GS and slide it on over. And an 8 gigabyte 3GS for $99, 16 gigabyte iPhone 4 for $199, and of course the 32 for $299. This is our new lineup. And these go on sale June 24th. <laughs> pre orders, pre orders start a week from tomorrow, June 15th. Now, on June 24th, we're going to be shipping in five countries, the US, France, Germany, the UK, and Japan. But in July, we're going to be shipping in 18 more countries, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Hong Kong, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. In August, we're going to add 24 more countries. And in September, we're going to add 40 more, so that by the end of September, we are shipping in 88 countries. This will be our fastest rollout ever. So iPhone 4. Now we've got a few accessories that I'd like to tell you about. The first. Very simple one, a dock. Real nice dock for the iPhone 4, $29. The other is, just like we did with the iPad, we took a crack at doing a case ourselves. We're pretty happy with the results. We call it a bumper. And it goes around the iPhone 4. It's got these really nice metal controls so they pass through the plastic. The back is open, so you have the camera and you can see our logo. And uh, they protect the phone very well. And they come in colors. And so they are real nice, and they are $29 as well. And I'd like to talk for a minute about iOS 4 upgrades. Uh, we will be offering iOS 4 upgrades 
for the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 3G, but again, not all of the features are supported. The hardware just won't support the kind of experience for multitasking that we would like to see, so that will not be supported on the 3G. But many things will be. And the iPod Touch, again, not all the features will be supported on every model, and it excludes the first generation, because again, the hardware will just not support it. And the great news here is that upgrades for all these products will be free on June 21st. So we finally, we finally found a way to get these upgrades for free to our iPod Touch customers, and we couldn't be happier about that. So that is iOS 4 and, of course, the new iPhone 4. Now, we put together a video to kind of try to summarize all the features of the iPhone 4, and I'd like to run that now. iPhone 4 is so much more than just another new product. I mean, this will have a lasting impact on the way that we actually connect with each other. In 2007, the iPhone reinvented the phone. In 2008, the iPhone 3G brought faster 3G networking and the revolutionary App Store. In 2009, the iPhone 3GS was twice as fast and brought up new features like video recording. For 2010, the iPhone 4 is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. We're introducing the amazing Retina display and we're bringing video calling to the world. And we call it FaceTime. It's gonna change the way we communicate forever. The very first time I had a FaceTime call, I was blown away because it is amazingly engaging, personal. It's all about connecting people. I think of my own children, like seven, eight years, they'll be off at college. And I can imagine being able to call them and see them, but also look into their eyes and see how are they really doing. What makes it even better is that it switches from the front camera to the back camera. So you can show someone what you're seeing. And because it's so mobile as your phone, you'll be able to chat anywhere there's Wi-Fi. But what's amazing is every time I've been using it, you can't help but smile and go, I can't believe this is real. This is, this is actually happening. Another thing we're really excited about on the new iPhone 4 is the Retina display. It's the highest resolution display ever built into a phone. At 326 pixels per inch, you get four times the pixels as before. So instead of the fuzziness of individual pixels, you get smooth, continuous shapes and tone. You have something that looks to your eye like you're holding a printed page in your hand. And the level of fine detail in images is just incredible. Another thing that adds to the sharpness and clarity is optical lamination. That's a very precise technical process that laminates the cover glass to the display and eliminates light refraction. So all of the hard work that's been put into this ultra high resolution display is presented with the most visual clarity. On top of that, we use IPS technology and LED backlight, so you get the most vivid experience in everything you do. The display on the iPhone is blow away. Apps can show more detail than you've ever seen on any device before. The text is just perfect iPhone 4 enables multitasking for all apps. You can now quickly switch between applications and everything is exactly as you left it. If you're like me and you have lots of apps on your phone, you'd love a way to easily organize them and find them. And that's exactly what Folders does for you. Take an app and drag it onto another app and it automatically creates a folder intelligently named with the type of apps you're grouping. Mail on iPhone 4 is incredibly efficient. You can see all the messages from multiple accounts in a single unified inbox. And it allows you to organize all of the messages in your inbox by thread. So you can deal with a single topic all together. Pictures taken with the five megapixel camera look amazing. 
and we even have an LED flash so you can take photos in low light. Plus, the camera captures full 720p high def video at up to 30 frames per second. Not only can you record great video, but you can also edit your video right on your iPhone with iMovie. The iPhone, for a user, it is simplicity, it is easy to use. Behind it is intense technology. What's running all this incredible software is our A4 chip. It's custom designed silicon, and what that gets you is remarkable speed and efficiency in a really small chip. The one thing we made larger was the battery. In fact, iPhone 4 delivers up to 40% more talk time. We started with completely opposing goals. I mean, we wanted to make this iPhone more capable. We wanted to add more features. And yet at the same time, we wanted to make it smaller and even thinner. And that led to some really surprising innovation. And we developed an entirely new grade of stainless steel that after machining is incredibly strong, but also remarkably precise. The steel frame functions as the antenna, but also the primary structure, giving us more internal volume. We also developed a custom glass that's comparable in strength to sapphire crystal, but about 30 times harder than plastic. This glass is not only used on the front of the phone, but also on the back. The quality of the materials, the manufacturing precision, the advanced technology, ultimately, all of this becomes relevant when you just hold it in your hand. Even at FaceTime, we're the only new feature we're delivering. This would be an amazing new iPhone. But it's the fact that we've got the Retina display, five megapixel camera, high def video recording, A4 chip, bigger battery, all in a thinner product. This is gonna change everything all over again.